Outside the royal palace in Athens, a demonstration is taking place. At least 200,000 people have answered the call made by the Greek National Liberation Front, or EAM, an alliance of left-wing parties that were organized to resist the German occupation and conducted resistance activities around Greece. They were opposed to the exiled government's ultimatum to disarm the ELAS, or the Greek People's Liberation Army, now that the Axis was in full retreat. As the demonstrators approached ever closer to the palace, the Greek police, following orders, fired upon the crowd, leaving 28 dead and seriously injuring 148 more. This event would mark the beginning of a conflict that has been argued to be the first proxy war that occurred after World War II, the Greek Civil War. Over the next few weeks, the fighting in Athens was dominated by the combined forces of the EAM and ELAS over the British, but after British reinforcements, they were eventually pushed out of the city. And by January 15th, a ceasefire was agreed upon in exchange for the withdrawal of Elas's units from the Peloponnese and Thessaloniki. What followed were a series of political defeats for the EAM. The Elas was disbanded and criminalized, forcing many of the fighters to avoid prosecution by hiding their weapons in the northern mountains and escaping to communist states of Yugoslavia and Albania. However, the KKE, the Greek Communist Party, remained legal, and its leader, Nikolaos Zakaradias, after returning from a German concentration camp, was appointed as leader of the party. And he wanted to get back at the government for disbanding the resistance fighters that bravely resisted the Germans. So in March of 1946, the highly anticipated election was boycotted by the KKE, which had a historically low voter turnout. Nonetheless, it went ahead anyway, and the monarchists claimed victory, eventually reinstating the monarchy in another election in September, which the KKE claims was rigged. However, the fighting was only just getting started. On the night before the election in March, a group of 30 or so ex-ELAS fighters allegedly murdered several policemen at a police station in Lichoro. From here, things quickly spun out of control, and from the borders of Yugoslavia and Albania emerged the now-organized Democratic Army of Greece from bases across the border under the command of General Marcos. The Greek Democratic Army had managed to recruit up to 90,000 men and were using guerrilla warfare tactics to strike at their targets and scurry back into the mountains or across the border, supplying themselves from villages and recruiting more men as they go. The United States could no longer ignore this threat to the Greek government, and President Truman announced support for the government under the Truman Doctrine. By 1948, the fighting had intensified to a full-scale civil war, as the Greek Democratic Army performed more conventional warfare tactics, replacing their prior guerrilla warfare strategy. Officially, the Greek Civil War lasted three years, from 1946 to 1949, and resulted in a monarchist victory with around one million people being affected. There were many contributing factors leading to the Greek Democratic Army loss, including the alliance with Slavic Macedonians, which the monarchists used against them by calling them Bulgarians. But jokes aside, the main reason for the failure was the conflict between Stalin and Tito, where Tito of Yugoslavia had always been Greek's main supporter, but Stalin wished the conflict to end. Eventually, their spat left the Greeks to choose their loyalty between the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia, and after heated debate, the Greeks chose the Soviet Union. Tito closed the Yugoslav-Greek border in July of 49, forcing the Greeks to use Albanian crossings, which were ineffective. The Greek Democratic Army was becoming more demoralized by the day. With divisions among Tito and Stalin supporters leading to internal conflicts, Zacharadius announced a temporary ceasefire to prevent the complete annihilation of Greece, but the conflict would never restart. By the end of the war, almost 100,000 communist sympathizers were imprisoned, exiled, or executed, and Greece went on to join NATO in 1952, and the monarchy remained in power until 1974, when a referendum voted overwhelmingly in abolishing it. But here in this game, things go a little differently. I attempt to win the civil war as the Greek Democratic Army, installing a totalitarian communist government in Greece that would put North Korea to shame, eventually breaking away from the Warsaw Pact and challenging NATO for my claims in Western Anatolia. Hi, I'm Colonel Cam, and welcome to 23 years as the Democratic Republic of Greece in the Cold War. <laughs> Hello guys, that intro took so long to make, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, or learned something new, consider subscribing. You might learn more about random, interesting topics of history. Anyway, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Welcome back to Cold War Iron Curtain, guys. We are playing Greece, but not the, uh, Kingdom of Greece. No, that would be 
well, probably too easy at the start. We are playing a Greek Democratic Army. Yes, because Greek was apparently in a civil war in 1949. I had no idea about this, but yep, here we are. See, we've got uh, this guy here, Dimitros Parsidelius. I definitely said that wrong, but this guy succeeded Zacharias. But don't worry, we're going to get him back in power. We have quite a few national spirits here. Look at all this. And we're on service by requirement already, and we have 13 manpower, which is not a good sign. I imagine this is going to be pretty difficult because uh, uh, this is not what happened historically, so wish me luck. I don't have any planes, nor do I have any boats, so I'm just going to, I guess, try and get these guys out of this encirclement. It would be an understatement to say that we start in a bad position in 1949. A bunch of my units are pretty much encircled. However, I managed to convince Yugoslavia to give me military access. I don't think you're supposed to do that, but you know what? I'll take every advantage that I can get. They're, they're going to reinforce this. That's the problem. Oh, he's, these guys are dead, man. If this is going to be really hard, I was beginning to think we might have another Chinese Civil War situation on our hands where it's going to take me like 5 billion tries. Anyway, one of the first options in our focus tree is either to continue the conventional warfare tactic or switch back to the guerrilla warfare system that was working well before. Historically, they continued the conventional war, which was a very big disaster for them, so I'm going to switch back to the guerrilla warfare strategy. Political power, but we get all these bonuses for 200 days. It, it's way better. I all right, there we go. A page from the Liberation Wars, done. So now we can disrupt enemy communication lines it gives them actually i'd rather give them the debuffs for like division yeah they get disorganized military good 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 because we assassinate their enemy officers sadly those individuals encircled in katarini died okay i couldn't help them but the rest of the front line seem to be holding which is good news maybe tito will give us guns tito please give us some equipment please i'm scared to go on speed five just in case i start breaking through and then i can't react fast enough so i'm just staying on speed four for now just because i just want to make sure it works I'm on speed five now. I couldn't be bothered waiting. I'm too impatient. I'm t okay. Are we finally getting... Yes, we're finally getting political power. Cool. So after selecting learn from our Chinese comrades, we should be getting 1.19 a day. After going down far enough in my focus tree, I got enough buffs so that I could start pushing. But I couldn't just do an all-out assault. No, I need to push strategically so that I can encircle as many divisions as possible, thus weakening them. So I've got like a, a concentration of troops there. That might work. All right, call international volunteers. 15 days. This is my first attempt right now, so... I'm expecting, going into this, I was expecting there to be multiple attempts, but I think I might be okay. Oh, International Volunteers is just giving us more divisions. All right, we'll put them in the concentration one. Yes, especially with those volunteers, I was confident that I could push all the way into Thessaloniki. I would be proven right as we broke through in the north, thus cutting their army in half. Need to take, Bar oh, we did it. We took it, we took it, we took it. We might even get, yeah, look at this, we got this. And we can go down, we can go here, and circle all that. Please, oh my god. In fact, it went better than expected because I managed to also encircle that entire army around Kazani. Yeah, Kazani? Yeah, something like that. I crushed the encirclement and then continued pushing. I then focused more on that eastern front, taking Thessaloniki and then advancing towards Alexandropolis. Oh, encirclement here. This province is the most OP province in Greece. Like, you can just take this one from either way and you just end up encircling so many... Uh, Greek divisions. Unsurprisingly, we defaulted on our debt, you know, just classic Greece thing to do. But we did end up taking that province, encircling the rest of the divisions. Hopefully by 1950, we will take Athens and end the civil war. No, this was a lot easier than I expected. My first try as well, so I didn't even have to redo. But don't worry, the hard stuff is uh, it's coming later in the video. I was really worried it was going to be really, really, really hard. Like, you know how China is, how hard China is. Took Athens and it didn't capitulate them. That's because they somehow retook Thessaloniki. So I had to go ca recapture that real quick. Come on. There we go. Come on, that's got to be it. 100%. They're done. The Kingdom of Greece has capitulated. They've gone into exile and the main forces have capitulated to the Greek Democratic Army. Play as Soviet Greece. Now, I didn't really know what this meant. I didn't know if it was asking me to be a free Greece or a Soviet puppet, or if it was asking me to play the exile government or the Soviet Greece. So I clicked the Soviet one, and we ended up as a Soviet puppet. We are now inside of the common form, with the future of the, the future Warsaw Pact. Uh, we can now establish the Democratic Republic of Greece. Right, and this Democratic Republic will be nothing like you've ever seen, okay? The North Korea of Europe. Anyway, now that the Civil War is over, I really got a chance to gauge my economy and see how we're doing. Turns out, it's not good. I I'm not surprised. It we just came out of a civil war. Okay, let's get on with purging some people. All right. Yeah, we're going to purge some fascists, i.e. the people we just fought in the civil war. I was looking at my income and expenditures and we're barely making any money. 0 0.05 billion a month. That is nothing. Let's cut back on some spending. Um, what are we spending the most on? Public ed education is its most expensive, but it gives us research speed and construction speed. So I do want to leave it, unfortunately. Welfare's got to go, man. If you hadn't noticed, we got Zacharias back. Uh, he just kind of turned up. I don't know when he came back. He just did. Finally, we're making money, but it's going to be a long time before we get out of debt. All right, 
We actually are okay on guns, so I'm gonna pull back on guns and I'm gonna start making the stuff that we need. I might get off service by requirement actually. I might go back to extensive. Just because this gives us like factory output debuffs, construction speed debuffs, dock, like all these debuffs, right? And I'm okay on manpower now, we've reunified Greece, so I have to save up like 300 political power, but I think it'll be worth it. You know, I should have demobilized my army a bit, uh, considering we're under the protection of the Soviet Union, I don't think we have to worry about anyone invading us. Also, now that the Soviets have Greece, I, th I was hoping that would launch their invasion of Turkey, so then I could I could get some Turkish land. But no, that, that didn't happen, looks like I'm gonna have to do that myself. We gotta get our revenge on Turkey though. For real, for real, we gotta get our revenge on Turkey. Where, where can I get my revenge on Turkey? Yeah, partition of Turkey. We need to own Istanbul. How do I go to war with Turkey? Unfortunately, that's not up to us. We need the Soviets to invade them, so I've got no choice, and which they don't do. So we have $10 billion. We actually have some money. You know, playing as Greece, I feel like when I was a child, and I was getting like $10 a, a week for pocket money, and then I saved up like $100, and I felt like I was rich. That's how this feels. Commence reconstruction. So we do have a bunch of debuffs for a thousand days. If you're new to this mod, you, there's a reason why it's 23 years, okay? Because everything takes forever to do, and not much happens in between each year. It sets like a more realistic timeline of things happening, which I'm not complaining about, but it just takes a while. Oh my god, we can establish gulags. Yes. Brace yourselves, guys, for the Sovietization of Greece. So things are gonna get- it's only gonna get worse from here. You know what? I'm instantly putting this spy, this spy in Istanbul. Inst- immediately. Okay? <laughs> the first thing I'm doing. Oh, okay, uh, we can actually go to extensive conscription, which I'm gonna do, because it will give us, yeah, some bonuses, or it will take away some debuffs. So. like most communist paths in this mod, there are three options that you can do. One is to stay with the Soviet Union and just be their bitch. The second one is to go with the revisionism and what Tito kind of does, where you go anti-Soviet Union but more liberal. And the third and final option is to go Maoist, or like really heavily authoritarian, basically North Korea. And that is the path we're going to be going down in this game, so I'm going to have no allies, but that makes everything more fun. Oh, we get police state. For 100, oh yeah, police state, let's go. Turkey be strong. Uh, the fact that Turkey's in NATO, man. Mm. Unfortunately, Turkey joined NATO, so it's going to be a while before I build up my army to resist that. Oh! Stalin just died. Brace for the de-Stalinization. Slowly but surely, we're lowering our war devastation. It's only a matter of time before we have a good enough economy and I can start building up my armed forces. I'm trying to get my army up to 100k, and then I'm going to leave it there. What is it at now? 87. So probably just a couple more, couple more divisions. Just two more of these, and I think that should be enough. While I was just doing a bunch of random stuff, I got a really interesting proposition from Turkey, as I'm concerned. Oh! Turkey wishes to hold talks. They want me to try and talk with them so we can de-escalate tensions. That is the last thing I'm gonna do. So we're gonna politely... No, well, where's, like, aggressively decline? Okay, we're gonna pl politely decline, right? We're not gonna be nice about it. I should embargo Turkey just for t even suggesting that we hold talks. And there we go. There's the last of our army. So, I have 101k in the army, and that is high costing enough. For now, we're still under the protection of the Soviet Union, so I don't need to make my army too big, but when I leave, I'm definitely going to have to ramp it up. Do you guys remember General Marcos from the intro, where I mentioned that he led the Greek Democratic Army? Well, we're purging him. Apparently he's harboring some revolutionary views or something. He poses a threat to the in internal security of Greece somehow. I don't know, but we're, yeah, we're getting rid of him. This one, we're leasing this to the Soviet Union? Well, to be fair, I got no use for it. Well, you can see that they got this as well, all those three islands there. Finally, after many years now, we have some sort of resemblance of stability in Greece. Not because the people are happy, probably. Probably because we've suppressed all resistance. All right, stability in Greece. Um, what should I do with this political power? Welfare spending. Get political power out of it. I think I will. Oh my gosh, we can broadcast anti-Turkish media. Immediately doing that. They're going to hate us, but whatever. Yep. They hate us now. Now we get to do one of those five-year plans. So it's a lot of economic cooperation with the Soviets, but this is genuinely like improving our infrastructure, office parks and civilian factories and military industry. So it's really good. Then there was a decision about what to do with the church. We can adopt the Romanian model, which is like, I guess they're still around, or we could just do what Albania did and abolish it completely. Go down the Romanian model. Get a bunch of stability out of it, which would be useful. I couldn't imagine Greece becoming atheist at all, like, that's impossible. So I did the Romanian model mostly because of stability, I really need it. Alright, Matthew 1924. Uh, I'm not, I might search this up during post-commentary, but I can't be bothered right now. 
So I searched it up, it says, and I quote, again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. We're still religious. Okay, so we haven't just abandoned our religion. All right, so now I should be having a bit better infrastructure. Was it Munis? Yeah, look at that. Wow, it's all three out of four. The years are just flying by. It's because each year takes about 20 minutes to play. Not even sometimes. Maximum 20 minutes. Just because you can just put it on speed five and just like do the focus tree. Anyway, I start to look at all the paths that I can take when the focus tree opens up a bit more. There's an option of getting out of being a Soviet puppet. Yeah. Because you can distance ourselves from Moscow. We become free. Or oh, just do this. KKE reformist takeover. Yeah, we're not doing this. Anyway, one of the big bonuses that we have being Greece is that it comes with history. And that comes with tourism. And tourism comes with money. So in the focus tree, there's an option to rebuild a bunch of historian or historic architecture. And oh boy, does that generate a lot of income for us. So we're about to be a very wealthy nation in, in the Soviet sphere, okay? In, in the puppets of the Soviet Union, we're the, probably the wealthiest. Which is fine, because I have 234 billion. You know, I, look, look at this. I, look, I could pay off my debt if I wanted to. My debt is 58 billion. I, I do. This has never happened in the history of Greece. So we got beachside resorts on Crete. Yeah, okay, we just spent another 50 billion and we're gonna spend another 50 billion. We get three office parks for it. And guess what? That new money is gonna be spent towards, guess what it's gonna be spent? Increasing our military maintenance. <laughs> the tourism money we're getting from people coming into our country is being spent on our military. <laughs> the 20, 20th Com Congress of the CPU. Wait, does that mean we can go down? This? Yeah, we can go down this now. News of the secret speech and its contents have been have caused a stir within the ruling Communist Party in the DRG. The condemnation of Stalinism and calls for reforms in the, imp in the implementation of socialism is proving controversial. Many communist leaders argue the Soviet shift represents a divergence away from socialism. The leadership of the party met in an emergency meeting. It was decided that the government will distance itself from Moscow as it assesses the impact of this new change. And we are not going to embrace this de-Stalinization, no. We're gonna regain control of the country and establish a Stalinist regime back here in Greece. We're no longer a satellite state. We're still in the Warsaw Treaty Organization, so the Warsaw Pact, but yeah, we're not a satellite state. We're a non-aggression pact with China. We're in the faction, market access from all the communist countries. That's good. We can criticize this regime and do all these kind of things. That's fun. Hopefully they don't invade me. <laughs> I would be screwed, but whatever. Uh, relax collectivization effort. Oh, there's a bit of a foreshadowing for you. It's going up. Exponential growth right there. Oh yeah, I was talking about the thing. The thing is this. You get an office park. We'll add a huge touristic scripted building that generates money. We're out, we're out of power. Some, some homes don't have electricity in Greece right now. Some people are living without power. They're using like fire to, and, and candles to light their own homes. Only in the poor areas, because it's only negative eight. All right, here we go. Establish Greece as the tourist hotspot of the Eastern Bloc. Well, with the uh, mass surveillance going around in our country, I don't, I don't think they're gonna be there staying for too long. Oh my God, purging Marcos. That's the, who's Marcos again? He's the leader of the uh, revolutionary socialists. We're just gonna purge him. Noted communist resistance military leader was assassinated. Yeah, he's, he's the revisionist guy. And we've just, we've just killed him. Oh, it's no good. Destroy growing reformism. That guy was like a hero of the Greek liberation war. We've just killed him as if it's nothing. That, there's no way that went down well with the population. I've also been making a tank division for a while now. I want this to be a good one, okay? It's got to have high organization, etc. If you guys are wondering why I haven't started any invasions or anything just yet, it's because if you know anything about this mod, there is a new focus tree at the start of 1960 and 1970, and it's 1958 right now, so I'm waiting until the next focus tree to see if there's an option to declare war. Four tank divisions here that, you know, they're not terrible. Four main battle tanks, some rocket SP artillery, and then some just m motorized. We're getting a bunch of rare metal stuff. Uh, what am I going to do with rare metals? What do, what do we do with that? All right, our army is coming to the end of 1958. Our army is around 200k, just above 200k now. Turkey is a little bit more in terms of manpower, but we're up to systemized military. You know, we have up-to-date equipment and stuff. I think like we could be better. I don't even know if their stuff is fully supplied. Like as we approach 1960, I'm getting my army ready to throw whatever it has for me. Maybe I'll need to defend. Maybe I'll need to attack. Who knows? But we'll see. Let us decide our future.
I, I don't know. This will give us an invalid event, apparently. I don't know what's so invalid. This this mod is always always like half finished. <laughs> every country, every time I play like a, a country or a path, it's like half finished. You'll go through like something that's half finished, and then the new date will tick by, and then like there's like a fully finished focus tree. It's like, huh? <laughs> There was no event, but we could do our last focus, and this actually makes us leave the Warsaw Pact. But not just that, we become Maoist, or Maoism becomes a ruling party, which is just a synonym for, like, uh, more authoritarian communism. Alright, modern medical system. I can't wait to get fully combined military. We're gonna destroy everyone with that. Because my industry is not good enough to build an Air Force, or it's probably too late now anyway, I decided to buy a bunch of planes. Alright, hopefully things uh, get spicy. Hopefully things spice up. Hopefully the 60s are, are crazy. Do we have a new focus tree? We do. Good, 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 good. Okay, let's have a look through this thing. Years of socialist prosperity. We get a third five-year plan. I've had enough five-year plans. Can we, like, do something interesting? Regulations. Request Eastern Block. Oh, God. <laughs> There's going to be something going wrong with this oil rig. <laughs> Attempts to cover up the disaster. Something about an oil rig in the med is going to go wrong. and It's going to be one of ours I'm going to try to cover. It reminds me of Chernobyl, to be honest. But instead of radiation in the air, it's going to be oil in sea. Anyway, the political branches is really interesting. There's three paths, two of which I'm locked out of because I already chose to go, to go Maoist. And the path that we go down is very anti-Soviet, or so we'll see what happens. Open further talks. The Tirana Submit. Create faction, the anti-revisionist bloc. Greece marks 10 years of socialist prosperity. It's a 10 year anniversary. To celebrate, the committee has prepared a large parade demonstrating the many achievements the Greek people have accomplished. Oh my god, we got Greek military parades. The future of the KKE. For the past few years, we have been limiting Soviet influence with the eventual goal of leaving them for our Chinese comrades. Within a year, we will be strong enough to leave the Soviet masters and continue the revolution with Mao. And so this is where we officially leave the safety of the Warsaw Pact. However, I am now confident that my army is strong enough to defend itself from any incoming invaders. And oh boy, am I glad I did that, because well, what's to come is uh, quite scary. What you can do for your Just put the fries in the bag, bro. <laughs> oh, fully combined military, there we go. Oh, tw almost 20 billion on the army. But we're insane now, our army, army's insane. Yeah, we're becoming increasingly paranoid that people are going to invade us. So we've gone fully. We got so much. So much. So much of our monthly income is going towards military. Yeah, the next highest is public spending, which is like half. Oh, I got my planes! I got my planes! I got my planes! Look, yes. Oh my gosh, I have so many. Oh, our air force is good. It's so dumb. You go up to war economy and your military. Manufactory construction speed, which is just military, right, or uh, military factories, go it goes down. So stupid. Nothing really happened in 62 and 3. Uh, I started my next five-year plan, which is an indication of not great things to come. We out here, and we wait. Because that is all this mod is a lot of the time. It's just waiting. For something to happen. I think it was at this point I started losing my sanity waiting for something to happen. Uh, but then we started approaching the oil crisis. We, so, so we started drilling in the Mediterranean because there's a lot of oil there apparently. And all is going well until a disaster strikes. Just before this whole crisis, I wanted to build a navy and I couldn't afford to build a navy just like my air force. So I did exactly what I did with the air force. I just bought a bunch of boats. You know what, we're gonna exploit the med. I don't know, Mediterranean riches, apparently. What is that, like oil down there or something? Probably. Mass surveillance. Oh my gosh, 1984 right now. These bounties must be harvested and used to improve the lives of our people. Totally not going to build a bigger navy instead. <laughs> improve the lives up of our people. Yeah, guys. <laughs> totally. All the money on just building a navy. <laughs> I don't know what you got. The, the, the allegations aren't true, guys. If I take out a loan, I can f afford another cruiser. And that is exactly what I did. I don't know where I bought it from, I don't know who made it, but now I've got another cruiser. Despite being a surveillance state, we still have a bunch of tourism. Crisis on the oil rig. Today, the Dimitros oil rig unexpectedly caught fire at 2.34am near the island of Crete. The rig belonging to the DRG suffered a critical failure in one of its oil containment cylinders, leading to an unknown amount of oil spewing into the med. 
Total failure of the rig was only stopped by Greek workers able to keep the fire from spreading to the extraction site. It is estimated that 10 people have died and an unknown number injured. The DRG has refused to comment on the situation as multiple countries from both sides of the Iron Curtain demand answers. Uh-oh, it seems like we have a decision here too. We can either just ignore the warning or adhere to the warning and increase safety regulations. I am interested to see what happens if we do ignore the safety regulations, but for the sake of me being good in this game, I decided to implement them mostly because when I checked the focus tree, the one where you implement the safety regulations, like I'll give way better bonuses. However, I will make a bonus video for my Patreons and channel members to want to see what happens when you ignore the regulations. So if you're interested in that, uh, become a channel member or Patreon supporter and you'll get the video. Okay. So for the sake of my me wanting to do well, I'm going to, we have pushed too far and implement the safety regulations. But I think I'm going to make a bonus video for my Patreon members and my channel members where I do the, I, where I ignore early warning signs. And I just want to go down and see, you know, the events and we can read the events and stuff. I just want to see what happens, but for the sake of the game, we're going to do this just because I want to do well. Anyway, things are about to get really interesting. I do the focus the Tirana summit, which creates the faction, but on creating the faction, something very tragic happens. All right, we're about to complete it. Well, no way. Soviets invade the Balkans. Only days after the anti-revisionist bloc's founding, the Soviet Union and many Warsaw Pact nations have announced a state of war with the anti-revisionists. The PRC has offered a strong warning that any further expansionist imperialism will result in war. The United States has called for a peaceful resolution and condemned any military action on the Eurasian continent. Yep, the Soviets have invaded us, so we got to defend ourselves. For some reason, the Hosha regime, Albania, did not join my faction. Instead, they're at war with us, which I think broke. China didn't go to war with the Soviets, so I don't have China to support me either. The only country that actually joined my faction was Cuba. What the hell is Cuba going to do? So I'm pretty much on my own in this. Faction? Oh my gosh. And we are at war with the Soviet Union. I'm trying to get onto the onto the Bulgarian border as fast as we can. Fortunately, Albania is pretty isolated thanks to Yugoslavia, so it was no trouble just invading them. However, Bulgaria is a different story. That country has got a lot of troops in them, and uh, the, my front line isn't really advantageous. It's in that part where Greece sticks out, and it's really hard to, like, back off. I have to use 17 divisions to guard all of my ports. That is crazy. But this is what we've spent the past god knows how many years preparing for, so bring it on. Well, this war will last forever. I'm going to let them just keep racking up the casualties, you know, it's fine. Fortunately, I have quite a big armor force, so I was able to use that to reinforce Thessaloniki. And maybe, just maybe, for a push in the future, but that's pretty unlikely right now. Am I, how many, how many tanks am I losing? Am I okay on tanks? I'm, I'm not going to be okay on tanks. I might pull them, pull them back to like, yeah. I have to keep buying equipment from the market because I'm going to run out of it quicker than the Soviets, I think. And eventually I'm going to run out of money. And to think that there's any tourism still coming to our country is crazy. I'm going to last stand for a bit. Just to make sure that we can hold. Slowly building up. I've got forts here. Just need forts there. Attacking these ones the most. That's why they're the longest to build. Fortunately, I managed to take out Albania before the Soviets could get reinforcements there. So, uh, yeah. I, I just got to guard that port and then we're good. Stop attacking. Oh my gosh. We actually lost that. We're about to lose 100k, man. That is so much for us. 100k is a lot. I mean, they've lost about a million, so they're losing 10 times. But still, they've got so much more manpower than we do. I don't see how we're ever pushing against this, though. I mean, I guess... We... I did not expect this. I thought they were our allies, honestly. I kind of feel like I'm being betrayed, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, when we left their faction and denounced everything they'd ever done. You <laughs> to totally feel betrayed. Actually, you know what? This is actually fitting to go to War Economy. Because then we build forts really, really quickly. They've pushed us back a total of three provinces now. They're not really that close to Thessaloniki, but it's pretty kind. It's getting scary. Ah, uh, I suppose it's time to increase my conscription to service by requirement, huh? Everyone must serve in the resistance against the Soviet bear, okay? It's got to happen. Finally, we've ended up in a stalemate. They've stopped attacking, and we're not attacking them either, so we're just going to kind of sit and look at each other. Hopefully next year we can push them out of Greece and beyond. Doctrine. 
Look at this, tanks and armor breakthrough just in- I say just in time, because we are trying to push into Bulgaria now, but not to take back our land, but to p push against the border next to Yugoslavia. It didn't work. Uh, instead, I actually tried taking back my territory, just because I think I have attack on core territory bonuses, which would obviously help me. For some reason, we have no supply. Now, I started building up the railways to Thessaloniki, hoping that, that we could get more supply through, but it turns out I just needed to block the sea zone next to the Medi in the eastern Mediterranean next to Turkey, because they were convoy raiding me, and I could just do all my supply through the railroads. Oh, now that I close off all of my waters if I do if I block all access to all of my ports now the supply is getting in because we're not using the sea why were we using the sea when we have perfectly good railways to begin with I don't know well to be fair the Soviets do have air power over us and I'm probably bombing those railways the French Republic declared France is in a whole civil war they've went th third position anyway then I tried pushing into Bulgaria again and this time I was met with some success we have Sophia Unfortunately, we went too far, and one of my tanks got encircled and died, but f other than that, it's still going okay. Oh, Pete, China wants to send us volunteers. Yeah, okay, finally, it's about time. I need connect- okay, all oh, these supply hubs are connected now. Nice, nice. But we need to build them up there for these two railways, they need to be a bit better. Motorized, motorized, I'm just gonna motorize this whole army. What am I doing? Once the supply was built up, I could push even further, and I eventually found myself even reaching Romania. But I'm doing a lot of casualties, like, they have no interest in continuing this war, right? We are in Romania. There it is. They're about to hit two mil casualties, the whole Warsaw Pact. They can't keep this war up. No, they cannot, and that's why I came up with a plan. I think it's safe to say that if I capitulate Bulgaria, we have refuted the Soviet attack and done even more. I think there's international pressure calling on, on the Soviet Union. Yeah, there's, there's international pressure calling on the Soviet Union to end the war in Greece, or in Bulgaria now. I took the last bit of my occupied land back in Alexandropolis and continued up the east coast of Bulgaria too. The Turks are shaking in their boots. They're seeing us like hold off the Soviets and pushing into Bulgaria and they're like, nah, nah, this is, this is insane. I gotta take Pavlodiv, Pavlodov, whatever this one. We'll take it pretty easily. There goes Bulgaria. We actually got Bulgaria. Can we pull this off? Once I capitulated Bulgaria, I pushed the rest of the Warsaw Pact divisions out of the country into Romania. And from here, Brezhnev, under international pressure and under pressure from his Warsaw Pact allies, would have to end the war in Greece and sue for peace. Another bunch of encirclements. Police state. Stability war support goes up. Resistance great. Yeah, police state. Let's go. We're also a police state right now, so I don't think any of the Warsaw Pact allies uh, want to uh, see the same fate as Bulgaria has got now. Okay, so I've got the uh, offer peace from the Soviet Union here, so I'm going to accept this. All it did was white peace me with the Soviet Union, so which I, which I think is a bit unfair. I think I deserve Bulgaria and Albania, considering I took all of their land. So I gave myself them as puppets, and then th that's fair. Okay, there we go. There's my peace deal. So I've signed a white peace with the Soviets. I'm no longer at war with them. However, I've also got myself a anti-revisionist Bulgaria, and then anti-revisionist -re Albania. So now we've got, yeah, we've got a small little anti-revisionist block here from holding off the Soviets, which I think was appropriate. With our regime consolidated in the Balkans, we can now focus on Turkey, and they are quite isolated from NATO, so I think we'll be okay. I thought about invading Yugo, but that was strategically a terrible idea. It would give me another border with NATO, which would be Italy, and then a longer shore to guard against, well, the Yugoslavian shore to guard against NATO, where they would just naval invade me, so it was a terrible idea. I wasn't going to be able to invade them, my navy wasn't big enough, I was hoping that I could cross the Bosporus fast enough, and I was hoping there were more crossings, like in the Dardanelles, and then from my islands too. There we go. Justif justification. Republic of Turkey and NATO. It is a member of NATO. If we declare war on them, they will get the option to call another na other NATO members into the war. This means it is quite likely we'll end up at war with the majority of NATO. That is fine. Well, France left NATO, so the next closest ally would be obviously Italy and, uh, what, West Germany, and then Britain, like, or Spain. They're too far away to really help. They have, It would take a while for their divisions to get there. My justification finished and I invaded Turkey. What? We can't get into Turkey from here. Alright, well, it's gonna have to be... We attack this way then. There was no crossing into Turkey from my islands. This was a disaster. That like shortens my advantage by so much. So then I'm racing towards Istanbul and then I found, I found out that there's no crossing at the Dardanelles either. The only way into Anatolia is through the Bosporus. There we go. Encirclement already. Actually created a faction as well. So when they do get attacked, the faction forms. Ah. Uh, 
You're telling me, okay, yeah, because they're a puppet of Britain, right? The naval invasions into our territory had also begun, all right? So I was fending off invasions from Britain like no tomorrow. Dude, we're gonna lose this stupid port because, oh my God, there we go. I deployed these guys here, that's good. That's, it worked out. I, I had some guys training and I deployed them. I took Istanbul, but then crossing the Bosporus is a whole different story. What? What is this? They took to, wait, when did they get Tirana? What is that? Now America has that. Oh my gosh. Why is there no one in Thessaloniki right now? Why was there no one there? I actually cannot get across. It's not happening. <laughs> well, it's happening, but it's not happening. The fact that we couldn't cross over from our islands was absolutely ridiculous. 90, that's the highest we've got, 97. And now it's back down to 92. It's so annoying because my attack is like in the high 90s, but I can never just like push them out of the out of the province. So in 1971, I try a different approach. I make some marines and hopefully this will work. I should be making marines, shouldn't I? There's no way I could do any sort of naval invasion. I don't have the navy for it. They'll just I could not get supremacy for the life of me. Look at this guy, he just left this port. Why is no one in that port? I don't like how they leave the ports. I don't like that. I've now got some marines. I've now got marines and I am forced attacking across the Bosporus and it's still like in the high 90s. And then the worst thing happened. The game crashed. But it's okay. My save game was relatively close because I had the autosave and it just passed half the year. So it's okay. Okay, 20%. I'm deploying my marines. This should, these should make a difference. Okay. I say should. I can't guarantee that it will, but it should. Where are my marines? Oh, here they are. My marines are here. Okay. Please. Make a difference. Make a huge difference. Because the game crashed, I got a chance to remake my marines, and this time I made them way better. So this time, I think we have a chance. Bro, we've been sitting on 97 for this whole time. Can you just go up a little bit more? Come on, this has got to, this has got to break. Dude, they're literally so close to being... Come on. There's like four terrible Canadian divisions here. This is like the moment. Come on, 99. 98. No, come on, man. We have it. After a few more crashes, I had a brilliant idea. We have control of Istanbul, meaning that we control the state, so I can theoretically, like, do the self-destruct button for the state where you damage the supply and infrastructure on the other side of the Bosporus, therefore destroying their supply hub. It will destroy mine too, but I still think we th this could work. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, we did it! No way! Okay, 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 okay. Let's just go, 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 go. I should make a save game here. I should actually make, yeah, in case it crashes again and then I go back on the other side. It's mountains now, so now I gotta I can convert these guys back to mountaineers. The hard part of crossing the Bosporus was over and done with. Now it's just a matter of time of pushing into Anatolia. Oh, look at this though. Finally, we're getting what we deserve. Now that I think about it, I could have done an invasion through the Black Sea, considering I control the Bosporus now, meaning there's no uh, uh, no NATO navy in the Black Sea. How about a tank Ankara? There it goes. Oh, it's so easy now. When we break through there... It's so much easier. However, the NATO divisions were starting to pile up more and more, and it's starting to get a bit overwhelming. But all I need to do is just capitulate Turkey. Once I do that, I'll force a conditional surrender out of America. I would keep playing, but the game keeps crashing, so I just want to end the, the end the video on like a really cool peace deal. Okay, we take, I don't know, that might actually be not enough, but that and then Van. No! Turkey is so close to capitulating. They just have a few victory points in the west and east. I just got to take them, but the game keeps crashing, and it's just putting me back and for, oh my gosh, it's so annoying. Oh my god. This is done, man! It's gotta be enough. At 97%, five victory points has gotta be enough. They're at 100. They're at 100. They're at 100. Oh my god. Get me that conditional surrender right now. Of course, I won't touch any of the other NATO members except for Turkey. I spent the peace deal, the majority of it, trying to figure out what the actual claims are that Greece has on Anatolia. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go it's like that, I think. Or it could be like that. In the end, I settled with this. Pretty much most of Western Anatolia. I also annexed Cyprus, and then I have a Turkish puppet, the Turkish Democratic Republic for the rest of the country. I've had enough of the game crashing, but yeah. That is what we formed, and I'm happy. And there we go. Thank you guys so much for watching me form a North Korea like Greece uh, prospering in the Cold War. Rise, no nukes went off. I don't even know if the AI does nukes in this. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.